There's an inscription. Madame Lodestone, singer and retainer of Lord Robert Salachi, taken from us when her house collapsed, returning her to the rubble from whence she came. Hello again, Malachite. No, don't say anything. I know how you'd love to talk, but I'd hate for you to wear out that beautiful voice of yours. So how you been keeping, Malachite? Okay, I guess you don't want to talk about that. This where you're staying at the moment? Well, I think I found Therma's body. It's in the Salachi Mausoleum. Need to see body. Take me there. Okay. Nice to see someone dealing with the grieving process at high speed. Cut straight to the acceptance. It saves a lot of time, doesn't it? I don't know why I bother sometimes. Not as if he's listening to me. Maybe it'd help if I hit him with something, like maybe a really heavy building. Need to see body. <sighs> of course you do. Here's the tomb. Need to see body. Hey, it's going to be pretty ugly in there. I mean, she was crushed under a house. That'd mess up even a troll. Need to see body. Malachite pushed the slab off the tomb like he was opening a jam jar. Inside was some rubble that I assumed was Therma's body. Frankly, there wasn't much to go on. Trolls are rocks. And that's the whole story. Not Therma. Keep looking. Are you crazy? How could you tell? Not Therma. Keep looking. I was beginning to wonder if Malachite was mad. If he was, I could at least make use of it. Okay, I've got no soul. I must be a heel. All right, I'll keep looking. But I've got a problem. There's this building I need to get into, but I can't do it. I need a grappling iron. A grappling iron, like the one you have. Look, I need to borrow your grappling iron. Do you understand? Give you a hook. You find Therma. That's the deal. I couldn't help but wonder what it meant if that rubble wasn't Therma. Had Sapphire lied to me? I wouldn't be surprised. Frankly, I was more surprised by people telling me the truth than telling lies. Lies flow like water, but the truth burns. Hm, that's not a bad line. I better write that down. Malachite gave me the grapple and left the mausoleum without another word. <laughs> The rubble was definitely the body of a troll. But according to Malachite, it wasn't Therma's body. I examined the body closely, but all I could see of interest were the troll's diamond teeth glinting at me. The glinting diamond teeth of the troll seemed to lure me like a siren. Well, okay, so greed lured me like a siren. Either way, I really wanted one of those teeth. All my best instincts told me not to take the tooth, but I just ignored them.
The skylight sat on the roof, an inviting alternative entrance. Breaking into the warehouse was easier than I thought, but then I was a natural pessimist. Living in Ankh-Morpork did that to a man. What little light there was in the warehouse was coming through the skylight, and shadows played on the walls as I searched for something to help the case. I didn't know what I was looking for, but I was desperate enough that anything would do. The warehouse was full of crates. I wasn't surprised. That's what the warehouse was for, after all. None of the crates seemed to be of much interest, though. I wasn't about to try carrying a huge crate around with me. It looked like a matchbook. Even my paranoid mind couldn't come up with a reason not to pick it up. The torn matchbook had been found in the Pier 5 warehouse. There was something written on the back of the matchbook, but a corner of the matchbook had become ripped off somehow. I could make out the words, Whalebone Lane, but it was clear that something was missing. On closer examination, I was pretty sure the missing piece had become torn off accidentally. The torn matchbook had been... There was something I could make... The scrap of cardboard I'd found on the Milka matched the torn matchbook exactly. I'm back, so I can see. Have you seen Sapphire? She's not here. She went off to see someone. Who? Who do I look like? A keeper? Do you know what this is? It's a matchbook. Any reason it might have the address of the parrot written on the back? None that has anything to do with me. I knew he was hiding something. The question was, how could I get it out of him? I'm against unnecessary violence. Besides, these skinny types can be tougher than they look.
Have you seen any labels like this before? Oh, sure. Where? On crates. I have this inescapable feeling that I could try and get some useful information out of you about this, but that it wouldn't be worth the time and effort I'd have to spend on the way. I'd go with that feeling if I were you. I gave the watchman Al Kali's description. He didn't recognize it. Heard of the Milka? Sure. Put it in my coffee, ah. Uh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's a ship. Yeah, I know. Just winding you up. Well, I'm already about as tightly wound as I'm going to get. Unless you were planning to use me as an alarm clock, I'd start thinking about being cooperative. Where's the fun in that? The Milka? Oh, yeah. All I can tell you is that they unloaded their cargo here. What was their cargo? Oh, I couldn't tell you that. That'd be violating Watchman Cargo Confidentiality. There's no such thing. Oh, all right. I just don't want to tell you then. Satisfied? Ecstatic. I don't know why I was suddenly trying to connect the streets of Ankh-Morpork into the big picture. Hello again. Hello. It didn't seem worth I'm trying to find out why a troll named Sapphire would lie to me. Any thoughts? Can't help you with that, Squire. Do you know anything about Count von Uberwald? Never heard of him. Can you read this? Give me a break, Luton. I don't know everything. Any thoughts on this matchbook or what's written on it? I don't know. Can you read this? Yes, it says Pier 5. What language? Agatean. How do you know an obscure language like that? Actually, two conkers is from the counterweight continent. I learned it from him. I thought that people weren't allowed to leave the Agatean Empire. Oh. I'd be careful. Why? People can be the, they see the last. Two conkers isn't going to burn. You know that. They see. Why? Two conkers. No one's that. Let me let you in on a little no you know how s I think so. Well, statistics.
Any thoughts on this matchbook? Or I'm sorry, Luton. I I've got a few more questions. That's lucky. When I gave Mundy's description to the watchman, he became animated. Well, not that animated, but more animated than he had been. That's the one. He tried to break into the warehouse the other night. You're sure? Or maybe I just like stringing you along for fun. What happened? I scared him off. I'd like to know where he is now, though. It doesn't look good to have people get away with breaking into a place like this. Bad for our reputation. Oh, I'm sure. Because everyone respects you, and this would just put a total stop to all those dinner party invitations. Oi. Watch it. I'm back, so I can see. I gave Mankin Mundy's description and asked if he'd seen him. He told me that he hadn't, but I was convinced he was lying. The matchbook had to belong to Mundy, and I was sure he was hiding here. So you don't know Mundy? I've already told you that I don't. And this matchbook means nothing to you. Do you practice to become this irritating? Well... I'm confused. You see, this is Mundy's handwriting on the matchbook, and this is your address he wrote. Shall I tell you what I think? I don't think I have that much choice. I think Mundy is here, but he told you not to tell anyone that he's here. You're just making it up as you go along. Well, I could always go and fetch the watch. I heard they were looking for Mundy too, and if he's not here, you wouldn't have to worry about being charged with hiding a known fugitive. They can get so impatient. Mundy's not a fugitive. How would you know? You little... <sighs> All right, you win. He's upstairs, but don't tell him I told you. I wouldn't dream of ruining your reputation in high society. I'd gone to a lot of trouble to find Mundy, and now the goal was in reach, it seemed like an anticlimax. I couldn't quite see what Mundy was doing when I entered his room, and seconds later, I couldn't see anything at all. The last thing I saw as I passed out of consciousness was the floor rushing up to meet me. By the time I came around, the watch had arrived. I must have been unconscious for hours, maybe days. I thought no one could feel as bad as I did, until I saw Mundy. His feet were bound and his eyes had been gouged out. Either he died of massive blood loss or he'd spilt an awful lot of red wine. It wasn't going to be a good day, I decided. Going somewhere, Luton? You don't leave until we've finished with you. You know where my office is. If you want an interview, you can find me there. I consider you to be the prime suspect in this investigation. You've got to be kidding. I've never been more serious. Never? What do you want with me? I was unconscious throughout the whole incident. 
We only have your word for that. You could have killed Mundy and then knocked yourself unconscious. With what? Your wedding. You're pretty serious then. What? Yes, Nobby. Now shut up. Will you explain what you think I did? You came in, mutilated Monday, and then knocked yourself unconscious. Is that all? There's your, uh, your promotion, too. You were really serious then. Nobby, you've made your point, thank you. Shut up. How did I knock myself unconscious? I don't know yet. But you're not a complete fool, Luton. You'd have found a way. Do you have any evidence against me, or is this just part of your ongoing campaign of victimization? It's just, you're always kind of serious. You were present at the time of the murder. Your rope was used in the murder. My rope? The murderer steals from me, and suddenly I'm guilty of murder? It's not a bad thing. I mean, you're the commander of the watch, and that's a serious job. Then there's the victim's message. Azil? How does that incriminate me? It ends in L.E. He could have been trying to write Luton. He could have died before he could finish. He could have been trying to write Lemon! And what is Azzy supposed to mean? I was only trying to help. For all we know, Azzy might mean it was in Mundy's own language. For all we know, Azil might mean, help, someone has gouged my eyes out. You're just guessing. There must be other suspects. The landlord says no one went upstairs after you. It could be the landlord for all you know. Mankin? He's not the type. Anyway, he reported the incident to us. Listen, you've got nothing on me, and unless you're going to arrest me, I'm going to leave. I'm keeping an eye on you, Luton. Consider yourself a suspect for all the counterweight killings. If you're in any way involved, I'll find out. Don't leave town, Luton. He's really got it in for me, hasn't he? He's not a bad person, Luton. He's just a bit... Um... Psychotic? Obsessed? Judgmental? I was going to say overworked, but I've changed my mind. What's this about counterweight killings? Well, and this is in the strictest confidence. I won't tell anyone who doesn't talk to me. The murders have all been a bit, well, odd, redualistic. What? They are involved with a revival of philosophical principles concerning the division of reality into two independent forces, mind and matter? Uh, no. Redualistic. Like what cults do. Reduals. Ritualistic? I see. Like someone was trying to make a point. Yeah. One of the patricians' clerks was killed the other day. Very suspicious. Why the counterweight killings? Uh, I'd better not discuss that. Gotta go. See you later, Luton. A lot later will do. Mundy's corpse wasn't very attractive. I wasn't looking forward to telling Carlotta how Mundy died. There was nothing on Mundy's body worth taking. Someone, either the killer or Mundy, had written Azil on the wall in blood. Mundy's blood, presumably. I had no idea what it meant. If I had an iconograph, I could have taken a picture of the message. But I didn't have one. And even if I did, there didn't seem much point. I didn't want to become too reliant on technology. The bed looked neither comfortable nor inviting. It hardly seemed worth searching the bed. The watch had already searched it, and frankly, it was a pretty nasty bed. Looking closely at the frayed rope hanging from the rafters, I knew that Mundy had been tied up by the legs and then hung from the ceiling. I didn't know why. Frankly, I wondered if I really wanted to know why. Something very strange was going on. I didn't want to tamper with the evidence. Besides, there wasn't enough rope there to do me any good.
It seemed likely that Mundy wrote... What did it mean? I didn't want to... Frankly, the message could mean anything. There was no rope around his body. I was looking in slightly the wrong place. Frankly, the message... I didn't want... Frankly, the message... I didn't... What had Mundy meant by Azil? Now he was dead, there was no way of knowing. But it was his last message to the Discworld, so it was probably something important. I just had to figure out what it meant. There was some frayed rope in the rafters. I hadn't completely fathomed its re On the wall of Mundy's room, someone had written the word Azil in blood. I didn't know what... On the wall, I didn't know... Mundy's killer had tied his legs together with my rope. It was bad enough that he stole my rope without implicating me in a gruesome murder at the same time. Nothing. There should have been something in the boots, only there wasn't. I was pretty sure that the watch didn't search them, and that didn't leave many options. What had Mundy meant by as now he was dead, but it I There was some fr I had The frayed rope in the rafters was the same as the rope around Mundy's legs. The rope that used to be tied to the grapple. That had to mean that Mundy was hung upside down and then killed. And that meant someone cut him down after he was killed. Curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> They say that the universe is full of particles called inspirations. One of them hit me at that moment because I suddenly realized something that should have been obvious. If Mundy was hung upside down, and if Mundy wrote the message, then the message was upside down. Turning it around in my head, I could see that it read 3712. V. It wasn't a meaningless word after all. It was a meaningless combination of letters and numbers instead. Somehow that seemed much, much worse. <laughs>